In the United States, we were getting crazy about crack cocaine, this new form, smokable form of cocaine. And we said that it was like no other drug we ever seen. One hit, you were addicted, causing uh, pregnant women to use the drugs, uh, despite the fact that they were, being, that they were pregnant, uh, causing all of this violence. As a result, our government passed uh, some of the most draconian and strict drug laws that we had ever passed. These drug laws basically punished people who were caught for crack cocaine violations a hundred times more harshly than those people who were caught for powder cocaine violations. And one of the results, after a few years, people started raising concerns about who were being arrested for these, these drug charges. And one of the results that we saw of this law was that uh, this graph shows the percentage of people who were arrested under these laws, arrested and prosecuted. Eighty percent of the people arrested under these laws and prosecuted under these laws were black, even though black people didn't make up the majority of crack cocaine users. Now, in, or, in order to, I want to take a step back and, and look at the sort of chemical structure of crack cocaine and powder cocaine to see if this sort of difference was justified. If you would, please focus your attention to the left. That's powder cocaine. Focus your attention to the right. That's crack cocaine. If you go back to the left and look at the red circle, that's a hydrochloride group. That hydrochloride group is on the powder cocaine and is there to keep the compound stable, meaning that you can't smoke it. That's it. But if you want to smoke it, you just remove that hydrochloride portion. Somebody figured out that if you mix cocaine up with water and baking soda, heat it up, dry it up, you can get rid of that salt, that hydrochloride portion. Now, as a result of this, the myth was that this made crack cocaine a lot more dangerous, potent, addictive than powder cocaine. But when the evidence came in, we, along with other people, did the studies. Turns out, crack cocaine and powder cocaine are the same drug. It's true that powder cocaine, crack cocaine's effects are more intense than snorting powder cocaine. But when you dissolve powder cocaine in water and inject it, they produce the same, the effects are the same as those produced by crack cocaine. Same intensity of effect. They are the same drug. The scientific evidence has been in for some time, and we know this. Yet the law remained the same. So in 2007, when presidential candidate Barack Obama was running to be our president, he said this about that differential treatment. He was not happy about the differential treatment. He said that judges think that's wrong, Republicans think that's wrong, Democrats think that's wrong, and yet it's been approved by Republican and Democratic presidents because no one has been willing to brave the politics and make it right. That will end when I'm president. The question becomes, did it end? He did get elected in 2008, by the way. Did it end? Not no, but hell no. It didn't end, but one of the things that happened was that the law was modified such that Crack cocaine violations were now punished only 18 times more harshly than, than, than crack, I'm sorry, crack cocaine violations were, public, were punished 18 times more harshly than powder cocaine. Is that justified based on the science? No, of course it's not justified, but it continues to be the same to this day, even though we know it's wrong. And it continues to be the law of the land, even though we know that even today, more than 80% of the people arrested under these laws are black in the United States. And it continues.